certainly if one looks at the excitement that was generated around the registration period and the skew towards urban and peri-urban areas where lots of younger voters are, we're hoping for a greater participation from younger voters in this election. We're also hoping that many, many more South Africans, given the fact that political decisions have reached into their homes and switched off the taps, switched off the electricity, are going to be a lot more energised about this particular election. In the past, it's been an abstract, well, the ANC is going to win anyway. I'd rather go to the beach or play golf. I don't care about politics. It doesn't affect my life. Well, it has started to do so. Yeah. And I think that in this election, there's far too much at stake for anybody to stay home. Yeah. And I think people are realizing that the country is in peril and the country needs to be rescued. And the heroes in that story have to be the voters of South Africa. So you actually call this the rescue plan. Let's, let's pick up on that. So we'll start on your, on your manifesto because I want to get through a couple of the points on there and then we'll see where the conversation takes sure. us. But you call it a rescue plan. You're stepping up to help South Africa in terms of, I mean, even your election posters are like, let's rescue South Africa. Um, so unemployment, this is a big one. This is a massive one. What will the DA do if you come into power? Where do you start resuscitating the economy and creating jobs? Well, unemployment is absolutely the big issue, top of the, top of the list issue, alongside load shedding, because we have a situation where the expanded unemployment rate is sitting at 42%. Seven out of 10 18 to 24-year-olds cannot find work. This is not sustainable, and we need to be able to help grow the economy. How does a government do that? Well, it does it by creating a conducive environment for job creation. And part of that conducive environment has to start with ending load shedding and water shedding. You cannot attract foreign direct investment. You cannot roll out factories. You cannot expand existing businesses if we cannot even put power into the grid to keep them going. And one of the big drivers of unemployment has been load shedding, which has seen factories close and relocate. So it's a laser-like focus on that. Around using the, turning the 350 rand a month grant into a work seekers grant, which is commensurate on you being able to prove that you're trying to find work and being able to use that money to access transport opportunities. And then, of course, attracting investment, cutting red tape, and making it easier for small, medium, and micro enterprises to be able to grow. And it isn't rocket science, Leanne. It's something we're already doing where we govern in the Western Cape. In the last year alone, 300,000 new jobs created in the Western Cape. That's 300,000 families that are able to exist off the welfare and off social grants and to start building a sustainable future for themselves. Jobs are going to be at the heart of this next election. And the party, I think, that is able to show people that it's not any good at talking about creating jobs, but it can actually do that where it governs, I think is going to be a compelling message going forward. If we don't fix the economy, if we don't start getting rid of some of the job-killing policies that are deterring investment, then we're going to continue to see the unemployment lines grow. We're committed to getting people off welfare and into work. Uh, social grants are necessary for people who are literally on the cusp of starving or prospering. And, but a job is the best way to deal with inequality, and a job is the best way to give dignity back to the citizens across the country. 